Download the .NET Core to start your coding journey today. Become an expert in year 2021. Hello, and welcome to Code with Sar. I'm Sar. This channel talks everything about .NET. And today, we're going to answer one fundamental question. That is, how can I download the .NET Core? I'm also going to introduce some COI commands that is very, very useful for you to start the journey of learning .NET. I wish this tutorial could help you get hands on to .NET and start poking around to learn it, be good at it, and become expert of it. Let's dive in. So how to download the .NET Core? I will go to the website .NET. Once you punch that into the browser, it will redirect you to the homepage of .NET Core. At this moment, it is .NET.Microsoft.com. There you'll see this download button. Once you click it, there are some choices need to be made. The first one is the which OS. Assuming Windows, then you'll need to decide which .NET to use. The one named the .NET framework to the most right-hand side is the traditional .NET framework, which is uh, not the one that we are interested in. In the middle, we have .NET Core 3.1, and to the left, we have .NET 5. After years of development, .NET Core as a technology has been rebranded several times. It was initially called ASP.NET Core, uh, then .NET Core, then .NET. So under the hood, .NET Core and the .NET 5 are the same thing. And if you pay attention to the top of the page, there is .NET 6 in the pipe. OK, but which version should we choose? Before answering the question, please pay attention to the tags below the version of .NET Core. There we have two options. One is LTS, another is current. LTS stands for long-term support. That means this major version of the .NET will be supported over several years. If you have an enterprise application that you want to keep developing, that's what you want. Current is the version of .NET where active development is happening. That is where we have the latest features, latest APIs, and things like that. If you want to learn the technology, including the latest language features, all kinds of things like that, that's what you want. The only caveat is the, the lifetime for this version would be much shorter than the LTS version. If you have a project that you think you're going to build over years, you either choose to skip the non-LTS version, or you're going to have a migration plan in place. And for people like us, as a learner and seeker, good news is you can download both versions and install them side by side. Later, I'll show you how to switch from different major versions once you have both of them installed. Now, once we decide which version of the .NET to go with, we will need to choose to install the SDK or the runtime. SDK is the software development kit. It includes uh, like compilers, tools for you to build the application. Runtime is only the environment that lets your application to run. So if you think software development as uh, building a plane, SDK is a factory. Runtime is the environment or facilities to let the plane take in off and uh, operate in the middle and so on and so forth. Now, I assume you come here to learn how to build the application, and we will download the SDK. Once the link is clicked, download will happen. And then we just need to double click and uh, start the installation. OK, once you have .NET Core installed, the first utility that uh, I recommend you to pick up is the .NET Core CLI, the command line interface. Now, you don't need to know everything that comes with COI, and you don't have to be COI exclusive. However, know some very common COI commands. It is easy and quick that it will make you very productive. Next, I'll show you some common commands that I've been using almost on a daily basis. And I believe these commands will build you a great fundamental to learn .NET. Without further ado, let's take a look at the first command. And it is .NET dash dash info. This command lists all the .NET SDKs that is installed on the machine, as well as the runtime that is used and the basic information like that. For example, on this machine, I currently have .NET SDK of 3.1 and 5.0 installed. And my host is 5.0.5, as well as uh, all the runtimes that has been installed on this machine. This information is very useful. One, if you get onto a new machine, new environment, you get to quickly know like what is what has been installed there, what you can make use of, which version of .NET is installed, things like that. Two, if you need to ask a question on Stack Overflow or you you want to file a bug on the GitHub of .NET Core team, this is the kind of information you want to put there so that people can understand your environment better and the issue got a higher chance to be resolved quicker. The next command is .NET dash dash version. 
This one tells you the SDK version that has been used for this project. Well, for this project, the SDK version is uh, 5.0.202. One thing that I want to mention here is that this is the SDK version, not the runtime version. It is important to understand it because uh, the versions of SDK and the runtime could be crossed. For example, it is supported to use .NET 5 SDK to build a .NET Core 3.1 application. The deal is, the templates that comes with the SDK, even for the same type of application, might be different. Move on. The next one is uh, .NET New. .NET New by itself doesn't do anything, but it is one of the most powerful COI command. There are so many things that you can do with it, that you'll need to put in another perimeter to let it know what you want. It is template-based. So when you use .NET New without a template name, it will just list all the templates that's available. Here on top of the screen are the templates for all types of projects that .NET New supported to create. We're going to use this section a lot later. But for now, I want you to pay attention to these templates that is tagged as config. I wish I'd pay attention to this section earlier, because these templates will improve the day-to-day -day productivity a lot. Let's take a look at a few of them in detail. The first template is global JSON. This is the one that allows us to choose which SDK to use for the current project. Let me run .NET version again, and uh, we can see the current SDK is uh, 5.0.202. Now I'm going to run .NET info. Oops, there's a typo. Let me do it again. .NET dash dash info. Like we saw before, there are two versions of SDKs installed on this box. Now if I run .NET new global JSON, it will create a file named global.json. In this file, it specifies which version of SDK to use. Let me bring it up in the notepad to see the content. Instead of a 5.0, I'm going to put .NET Core 3.1.408, which is the other SDK version, here. And I'm going to save it. Now let me run .NET dash dash version again. And the current SDK version becomes 3.1. And that is how you choose from which version of SDK to use for the current project. Other config templates are also useful to reduce the boilerplates. Take this .NET new git ignore, for example. It creates the .git ignore file that includes the patterns that are most likely to be excluded from the git repository for .NET projects. So if you use git repository who don't these days, it saves time for you to come up with your own. There are other useful templates like NuGet config, so on and so forth. Again, you don't need to remember every single one of them, but when you need them, now you know what to do. Last but not least is to create a .NET Core project with a project template. Let's use .NET new to bring up the list of the templates again. Here we can see almost all the types of projects that are supported by .NET Core. Console app, web API, X unit tests, so on and so forth. Let's take the console app template and give it a quick try. Let's run .NET new console. And once the project is created, we can run .NET build. It's another COI command to build the project. Once that's done, you can run .NET run to run the app. And here we see the hello world. The reason it works is because we just created a console app. And both .NET build and .NET run is going to use the project that is available in the current folder. Let me bring up the project in VS Code. Now you can see it is line 9 console output, which is responsible for outputting hello world. And the command line that we just learned is still useful in the terminal here. Let's update the code a little bit and recompile and run it again. Hello, .NET world. Yay! Well, today we downloaded the .NET Core, installed it, we also picked up some COI commands on the way. Is that the best way to start learning .NET Core? What's the alternatives? How about Visual Studio? Here's my opinion. I use Visual Studio almost daily. I think it is still the most powerful IDE on this world. But I don't think it fits for us to learn the technology. For example, you could probably switch the current SDK version by using a dropdown rather than editing the global JSON file. I would still prefer to understand what is happening under the hood, especially when there's not too much complexity there. Alrighty, thanks for watching. I hope this is helpful and you enjoyed it. Press the like button if you do. Subscribe if you want to learn more and be good at .NET.
I'll see you in the next one. Before then, take care.